If you want to discover new or different heirloom varieties of seeds that you would like to try, then stay tuned because right here we have over 74 different varieties of heirloom seeds to show you. Hi guys, I'm Chantal. And I'm JP. And we are from PeacefulLivingNH.com. Join us here where we share about gardening, from scratch gluten-free cooking, food preservation, and self-sufficiency. These are all seeds that we are going to be trying out in the season of 2022. So if you want to know how they did and what we are going to be cooking with them and how we are preserving them, hit that subscribe button and the bell to stay notified whenever we upload a new video. Let's start. First one. <laughs> Carrot Saint Valeri. This was a free uh, seed. I didn't even order that, but after I ordered the seeds I thought, oh, I totally forgot to order carrots, so thank you. Well, if you didn't order, it. how'd you get it? It was free. It says, thank you for your order. Oh, they just gave it to you? Yes. That's nice. That's very generous. Oh, just to let you know, guys, uh, these all these seeds I ordered from Baker's Creek, doc, well, from rareseeds.com. That's our website, uh, but the company name is Baker's Creek Heirloom Seeds, and all their seeds, I believe, are heirloom. So if you're looking for heirloom seeds, which you would be here for this video. <laughs> um, you can look them up. I'm not associated, we are not associated with them by any means. Uh, so, uh, but I just uh, thought I would, I want to try out there. And, and we seeds. haven't tried these yet. Yeah, this is the first time. Yeah. These are all new varieties to us. Uh, we haven't tried any of these seeds actually, like at all. Well, I, why'd we pick these seeds versus the other ones we were using? Yeah, so we were using uh, seeds from uh, Heaven's Harvest, which we love Heaven's Harvest. Uh, they're a great company and they offer bulk seeds also. You can buy like uh, big packages of seeds from them. But the reason why uh, we decided to go with this company uh, was because um, the uh, seeds from Heaven's Harvest are for areas where um, you, you would have like a longer growing season. Uh, versus us where we live over here in New Hampshire, we have a short growing season so we needed uh, varieties that can uh, grow pretty quick and produce food for us very quickly so that we can actually eat the food before <laughs> frost hits. <laughs> and I think that's uh, with a lot of the seeds that we had, we ordered from Heaven's Harvest says what the problem that we were facing. Uh, well we, we had to wait until the frost finished, Yeah. then we planted and then that creates such a short growing season that right before the fruit the fruit could really ripen to the, where we liked it uh, a frost would come again yeah yeah like even the uh, brussels sprouts that i've planted and even though i planted them in like really good soil it took forever for them to grow yeah, and then the deer were... came and ate them yeah. <laughs> afterwards yeah then we had we the rodents so the, the giant deer <laughs> yeah uh, so this variety let's see tomat t t tomato orange icicle yes when i saw that i thought I'm gonna get this even though I ordered so many varieties of tomatoes because supposedly this is supposed to taste like uh, like um, it has a citrus flavor to it yep. and I love uh, lemons I, I think though if you're gonna harvest the seeds from a whole bunch of tomato plants at the same time you have to worry about cross-pollination so according to the so, so the tomatoes that I got, a lot of them mature at different varieties, uh, at different rates. So that okay. we can, that's another se another thing you want to look for. If you are uh, going to plant a lot of stuff, you don't want to plant everything to mature at the same rate uh, so that you're not harvesting everything at the same rate, especially for fruit preservation. That's, you're going to find yourself swamped with like t loads and loads of vegetables and fruits just coming from your garden and you're going to be totally overwhelmed. We've been there and it's just, it's not fun. Overwhelmed is and one thing. A lot of food is going to rot because, yeah. Uh, like the, the, the second thing is... Um, well, unless you give it away. Well, well uh, yeah, the, one of the problems with being overwhelmed is that you have to give most of it away because you can't process it in time or else yeah. it rots. Especially but, if you have kids. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. And know, homeschool. Or <laughs> and a regular job. Yeah. yeah. Um, but another reason, like we kind of touched on it, is that if they mature at different times, then they won't all be flowering at the same time. Then they're less likely to be cross-pollinated. Yes, yes, that's what I was and, getting at. And the, and the point of the heirloom seeds is to have seeds for every single year. Yeah, that that's gives you back what you intend, not some kind of mix. Yeah, we uh, we forgot to mention we do collect our own seeds. We ha we try our best to harvest our own seeds whenever we can. Um, so that's something we want to improve on. I think in yeah. the coming up years, um, just 
uh, with the way how the world is, I think uh, <laughs> it's important for us to uh, save our seeds. And it's cheaper. Uh, it is. Uh, it's definitely cheaper. I mean, I. So you, save, you save quite yeah. a bit of money doing that. Yeah, these seeds, even though like you get small packets, like each packet is about three to four dollars. Right. So it's yeah. Um, okay, this one is tomato. Re what? Re and strobe. I I can't read that. Here, I'll just show it to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cherry tomato. It's like a big cherry tomato. Looks good. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to try new varieties of tomatoes because, I mean, the tomatoes we have are good. Um, and they grow on their own too. Yeah, they do. They, we just kind of like throw them in the garden yeah, and they we, grow. <laughs> we try composting tomatoes and next thing you know, tomato plants are popping up out of our uh, compost pile. I don't mind that at all. No, I don't it's fun. But you don't mind I, it either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is Rutgers. I'm going to have such a hard time reading all these different varieties. Um, but I'll put the link for you guys in the description box so that if you want to check them out, you can. Um, I think this is like a slicer tomato, I think. What does it say? Um, mm, 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 mm. They have a lot more information on their websites on the different varieties. Uh, they don't include all this information on the packets, but if you have any questions about, the, about a specific vegetable, you could go back to the website and type in a, a specific uh, variety of plants. You're going to want to mention the website name. I, I did in the okay. beginning. It was rareseeds.com. Rareseeds.com. Yeah. Don't rip it. <laughs> yeah. And this is uh, okra heavy hitter. So the reason why I got this one is for two different reasons. First, it's supposed to mature a lot quicker than the one that we originally had. And um, also, like like its name says, it's a heavy hitter. It it's has a lot, a lot of okra. I love okra. He doesn't. Well, a lot <laughs> of dishes that you like have okra in it. Yeah. I love okra. It's just, and it's like, I love eating it raw too. It's yeah. super healthy for you and it's good for your joints and especially if you have like arthritis and, um, yeah. This one, cabbage premium late flat Dutch. So I ordered different varieties of cabbages uh, because I wanted some to mature in the summer and some to mature in the fall. Um, and the ones that mature in the summer, they have a shorter growing season. Uh, this is a big deal because we couldn't harvest any of our cabbages last season. Yeah. Because they matured way too late. Yeah. Like, it took forever for them to mature. I think also where I planted them, the soil, yeah, the soil was wasn't good. very good. Yeah. yeah. So that's something we're still working on. We have an area in our garden where the soil is terrible and uh, we're just trying to... Um, fix that problem by adding a lot of compost and organic matter and all that stuff. Okay, so this one is the uh, uh, green, greens, Chinese cabbage. It's like a Napa cabbage. And um, I love this. If you love kimchi, you should plant this. <laughs> it's, it's great. Also like for, um, for Asian uh, soups and stuff like that, oh, yeah, this is yeah. great. Yeah, I love the flavor of this cabbage. This also, I think, is a late um, variety, like fall variety. They don't like... I tried growing them last year in the spring. And our spring, um, like we have a short spring. It's basically winter, then like two weeks of spring, then summer, right? Do, do you have that soup recipe on your blog? No, I don't. Uh, I think yeah. soon you should need to put that on there. Yeah. That's good. Um, for if you guys are like wanting recipes and stuff like that, head on to peacefullivingnh.com. I have tons of recipes over there. Yeah, they're really good. Um, yeah, so uh, they don't like the heat. Uh, so if you want to plant them in, um, if you don't have like a uh, a long cold season in the spring, you'd rather it. It would be better if you plant them in the fall, like late summer, early fall type of thing. Um, okay, this one is Cabbage Viola, Violaggio de Verona. Boy, that, that's exotic. <laughs> Looks beautiful. It is, isn't it? I got it like, I thought the color was beautiful. Yeah. I wanted to try it out. Um, yeah, I think like I got several varieties um, where we would always be having cabbage because we don't have a root cellar and I didn't want to grow the cabbage where they would mature in the summer and mm. then like we can't store them I'd have to turn them all into like sauerkraut or something right, right. like that so 
So having different measurement, it makes it easier to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, this one is Winter Choi Chinese Yellow Hearts. Isn't this beautiful? They are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. This one is it grows under the snow. Wow. Like, yeah. This is why I got this one so that. So that would be like a, a fall type thing. Yeah, like a late fall. Um, uh, choy. I love bok choy this too. Is, so. And you're going to be showing people how to plant these and where to plant them and what yeah. season and all that. And how to cook with them too. And how to cook with them, right. <laughs> yes. Now let's see. Cauliflower. Robber or Robert? I don't know. I think it's French. It's probably Robert. <laughs> the, the, the deer are cauliflower robbers. That's for yes. Sure. <laughs> uh, I haven't successfully grown cauliflower yet also because of the... Uh, because of our short spring season, I have been trying to grow cauliflower in the spring and Same thing with a uh, broccoli same problem and what what happens is they just bolt very quickly mm. and uh, I Decided this past year that I would want to plant them in the fall But you know having a toddler that was pretty difficult for right. me to manage that um, so I got different varieties where some of them have a very short growing season where I can plant them in our spring and on other varieties where they would have a longer growing season and those would be grown in the fall and they're very cold hardy also. Uh, I'm not sure which ones are which honestly I totally forgot I probably should have taken notes I thought they would have the information on the seed packets but I was wrong <laughs> it's okay not a big deal also borage this is supposed to be a medicinal plant and it's beautiful the glare of the light I think made it hard yeah to see. I know it's kind of there you go. Yeah. There, I gotta, gotta do that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that looks like uh, bees would like that one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I like to mix in flowers with... Uh, it's, um, it's, I, I know honeybees like those blue flowers. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Also, um, I think some of them might be like... I don't know if this is an aphid attractor. I've, I haven't planted it, so I wouldn't know. Yeah, you can talk um, about that in other videos. Yeah. Uh, this is onion, red uh, Flo Florence, Florence. So this is a like a shallot, I think. Uh, that's how it described it on the uh, uh, website. Um, I also saw some walking onions there, but I thought I ordered already a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna order more. <laughs> Oregano or wild. Zatar, and that's something I've been looking for over here. They actually uh, use the same name, Zatar. Yeah, so we had oregano, a patch of oregano, but I just um, changed that whole area into a flower bed, and I got rid of the, the oregano, and I thought I'll just start over again. And I got two different varieties. One is the this is like the Lebanese stuff that I'm used to. I grew yeah, up. Yeah, it's with. really good. Yeah, it's great in sandwiches. Yeah, or like uh, pizzas, mm. like Lebanese pizza. Look at this one. Cauliflower. And huh? I think it looks alien. It does, doesn't it? It's beautiful. Yeah. Cauliflower, purple of Sicily. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah. And I got sent um, rainbow mixed ca California poppy. I'm not a big fan of the colors, but that's a thank you seed Oh, packet. it was a free, it was a free yeah. one. Yeah, I didn't order that one. And these are just green onions. Like, um, I think they're Asian. Ishikura. Ishikura. I think they're like Japanese um, green onions. They're supposed to be big and um, soft and also like very cold hardy. I'm going to separate out the free ones. Okay, so sure. Know. There was I, a free. Oh, is that one that one? To her. Yeah, this is, I think this needs a trellis. We're going to have to, we're going to have to put a trellis. Like a. Uh, oh, 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 I what understand. You call it? Yeah. Like um, something for it to climb on. You know those cattle uh, fences? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to do this this year. Oh, goodness. So this is long beans. Taiwan yard long. So, again, we've never tried any of this stuff. Yeah, but we're going to. Yes. But we are, we're going to do it all the same year? 
Well, you plant beans. Yeah. You plant onions of different varieties. You all, plant <laughs> all the same year. I don't know if it's all the same year, but I'm gonna be trying my best to do as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be a seed planting machine. Um. Salpiglosis. Salpiglosis black trumpet. What? Don't tell me you don't know what that is. You bought it. I did buy it, but it had a better <laughs> name on the... Oh, Black Trumpet Salpiglosis. It's a flower. It's a pretty flower. That's why I got it, because it was pretty. And I wanted, like, something dark, because there's a lot of, like, uh, yellow. And we, we have a lot of black-eyed Susans that just pop on their own everywhere in the garden. And I thought this would look nice with it. Yeah. Yeah. Work with the weeds, don't kill them. Yeah. I mean, black eyed Susans aren't necessarily weeds. They're just flowers that overtake everything. <laughs> That's not a weed. <laughs> okay. Egg, eggplant ping tongue. I love eggplants. And I just like got all sorts of varieties. And those are all um, they have a very short growing season. I wish they had the growing season on this, but it doesn't. Is this their full full development? Yeah. Those are the little fingers. I've never seen eggplant like that before. Those are Asian. I've seen them. I've been oh. with them. They're like for Asian cooking, so for like stir fries and stuff like that. I see. Yeah. Also, this is Asian. Eggplant real black. Oh, it's real black. That's real black, all right. <laughs> like yeah. I, if I didn't know any better, I wouldn't have picked it thinking it went bad. Yeah, so if you've, if you've ever tried the stuffed Lebanese eggplants... Is that what that is? This is so very similar to it. I The darker the color, the more delicious it's going to be. Oh. So, like, it, because it, that color goes into the stuffing on the inside and it colors the stuffing and when the color when the stuffing gets colored with the purple it just it tastes even better really yeah but you don't like the texture of eggplants though. i don't like fried in oil eggplant it's the oil messes my stomach up yeah eggplant i want to try it though i want maybe you might like this one maybe because there are different types and textures eggplant Nagasaki long. I think I think these are all Japanese varieties. I could be wrong. So that's pretty cool too. That is. Yeah, I wanted to pickle some too. Like I don't know. Pickled eggplant. Yeah. I never, never heard of that. Never heard of it. Yeah, we we do and we do like um, so in Lebanon. We uh, my mom would do uh, eggplants pickled in vinegar with like. Uh, what do you, with the garlic and um, pomegranate seeds and hot pepper and really that sounds good. Delicious. And then another one was with like an oil with walnuts and that's actually my favorite. But not this. They don't do this type. It's like a fatter type. I got a different type over here. Yeah, like this one. Oh, that's fancy. Yeah, that would be the one you do with the walnuts and stuff like that. I see. Eggplant mitoyo. Also, that would be great for um, Baba Ganoush. Yes, he is. Yes. <laughs> Very. <laughs> oh, this one, I got it just because of how it looks like. Kale, Japanese, uh, oh, Japanese flowering kale. So, it looks like I see snow around that in that picture. Yeah. It's, it's very cold hardy. So, I'm wondering... Uh, how does it do in other in weather where you have other flowers? Like I kind of wonder if you can put it in the flower bed. Yeah, so a lot of people use flowering kale for like ornamental yeah, yeah, as yeah. ornamental kale. Yeah, um, and um, that's what my that was yeah. my thought. You know why not grow your food in the flower bed too? Yeah, and I I do that a lot actually. Like I last year I tried growing basil in the in my flower bed. It didn't do well. It died just because I wasn't able to get to transferring basil as early as I wanted to because mm -hmm. she was little at yeah. the time. Um, this year she's going to be helping me put her to work already. Go down. <laughs> okay. uh, Red Express Cabbage. 
I love red cabbage, especially in like. Uh, Are you sure? Yeah, okay. salads and stuff. Oh, we've never tried tomatillos. I don't, I don't know what that is. You know, like uh, salsa verde. Um, it's like tomatoes. I, let me show you guys. So, purple tomatillos. I wanted to get the green tomatillos. I've never grown tomatillos before. I don't think I've ever, ever even tried them. Maybe, maybe once in like salsa verde or something. Um, but are you, are you sure these all grow in our area? Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. a lot. It's a lot more than I thought we could grow in this area. Yeah. Um, well, I did my research. Yeah, you did. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I just I don't like going for just the regular average Joe. No, cl uh, clearly. <laughs> stuff. I wanted to try the different stuff. Yeah. Because everyone has had green tomatillos. I wanted the purple ones. Yeah, I want to try them. Of course. Let's make it look like an alien garden. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty. Yes, they are pretty. <laughs> Bini Hushi Mizuna. What you call me? <laughs> I think this is also a Japanese. Uh, I guess, I'm guessing there, I'm seeing a theme here. There's like yeah, purple. a love of Jap purple and a love of Japanese uh, stuff, nice. uh, vegetables and fruits. Yeah, so this is like a. A very tender salad green, how it described it. I think it's very similar to um, like dandelions, but um, but milder, like not with a as bitter a taste. I was I was gonna ask, do you think it would spread like a dandelion? Uh, that I was concerned about that, but it didn't say anything okay. about it. So I think that we'll probably be harvesting it before it would make the flowers. And if it and spreads, we we just keep eating. Yeah, I mean, if it spreads and we can't garden, let's say we just like broke a leg or something. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have dandelions that are like tender growing everywhere. And purple. <laughs> yeah, except if we have a nuclear holocaust, then... Uh... Then no one can tell. It's not ready to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is real. This is us. This is normal. This is normal, you know? <laughs> boco boco spinach water leaf yeah this is also like a very um tender spinach and um supposed to grow fast and um doesn't bolt very quickly supposedly i will put out the alarm <laughs> Another heavy hitter okra. Clearly, I love okra. Oh, heavy hitters. Yes, heavy hitters. And this is um, Gumfrina Atomic Purple. I've never tried planting Gumfrina before, but I like how the flower looks like, and I love purple, clearly. <laughs> Pink and purple. Oh, this one is really cool. Oh, that's so nice. this is a spinach variety that you can it makes berries and you can eat the berries too. Oh. It supposedly tastes like strawberries. Strawberry spinach. So it's like a spinach and strawberries mixed together. Yeah. Really cool. That's really interesting. Yeah, I thought this would be like great in salads and Yeah, it would. You just cut the whole thing off and yeah. right in the salad. I wonder I think that would probably spread like spread like crazy too. Is that a bad thing? No, we don't mind food to spread and naturalize. Yeah. We, like, our lawn is full. We're, we're, we're known to hang on to our weeds <laughs> yeah. and actually eat them because a lot of them are edible. Yeah, and medicinal too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, oregano, vulg vulgar oregano. I think this is just a regular variety of oregano, but it makes a pink flower, so that's a bonus. <laughs> that's nice, yeah. Yeah. Oh, broad Windsor fava beans. I've been trying to grow fava beans in our uh, in our area for a long time. These are supposed to be like a short uh, grown variety and I think they're resistant to aphids. Oh. Like the problems that I've been facing in our aphids and the growing season, um, like I know they like cold, but they also, I think, will not die the aphids. in the extreme, not the aphids, <laughs> the fava beans. The fava beans like the Yeah, bean. the camera stopped recording, I don't know. 
where, so I'm just going to repeat myself. If you've never tried growing fava beans before, um, or I should say eating green fava beans, they're absolutely delicious, but one thing to be cautious of is some people have an allergic reaction to the green fava beans and um, they, like, I don't know what the reaction is called in English, but they usually end up in the ER. <laughs> So, <laughs> it's kind of like one of those reactions where... It's a slight reaction. <laughs> where, um, like, uh, kind of like a peanut allergy or something like that. So, oh, is that all? Yes. So, and people don't know until they try it. Yeah, they don't try it. And they feel it next to the ER. Yeah. So... <laughs> if you don't, move, drive to the ER and then try it. <laughs> yeah. so it might be safer that way. <laughs> No, okay, Mary, yes, Mary Washington asparagus. I've been wanting to make an asparagus bed for a long time. Last year I planted a few asparagus, a couple of them sprouted, and then I never planted them because um, I didn't have time. Reasons. Yes. <laughs> uh, onion. Oh, they also had a purple asparagus, but I thought, you know, I do like the green one. I've never tried the purple one. Let me just go with the variety I know this time. And then I'll venture in into a different variety next time. Um, yellow of Parma onion. And these um, supposedly are, I think, like a sweet onion. It says long day type, rare Italian variety, large golden onions, or are oblong globes. This late onion makes an excellent keeper. So long day is basically just like the sun, how long does the sun stay, uh, the, how, how long do you still have daylight during the day in the growing season basically and we have like really long days, um, like we have, the sun rises what, at like 5 a.m. until in the 9, summer, yeah, well, yeah in, in the, the summer, summer until, nice, like, yeah. until like 9 p.m. in the evening so um, yeah, we have really long days. So if you're in the north and you want to try a long day variety onion, um, this might be a good one for you. I've never, again, never tried it again. Uh, yellow of Parma onion. So it's direct sun for a long time. Yeah. That's what it looks. Yeah. This is a uh, Peron tomato. I think this is just a slicer tomato. We love tomatoes, or I love tomatoes. She loves tomatoes. <laughs> I like tomatoes. <laughs> well, my daughters like tomatoes. Yes. Both of them. They do. Yeah. They like, we, we eat it like it's fruits. Yeah, I can't. <coughs> yeah. Our son doesn't like it, though. Like, like with, with the different dishes, if you make a lot of dishes that have tomato sauce in them, mm -hmm. I end up getting heartburn by like the third one. Yeah, but cooked tomatoes different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And raw tomato, it's not, it's not going to do that for you. Uh, Tokinashi turnip. I always plant the purple turnips, so this time I wanted to try this variety. It's white. It's cool. <laughs> the turnips love our beds. They do. They get huge. They, yeah, like we yeah. get like... One time I grew a turnip that was like bigger than my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Several of them. Yeah. Miner's lettuce clay... Tonia. I think this is a lettuce that um, you can grow in uh, like real cold, like in a frost. Yes, it's very cold hardy. Uh, it says 40 days. Yeah. You're making me think about setting up a winter type greenhouse. You know, a cold type greenhouse. A cold frame. A, a, cold frame, a short one, because these are all short little things. Yeah that I wonder if we, we could grow in the winter if we use cold frames. Yeah, well we did get hoops uh, recently. We just ordered some hoops um, and um, to use like as a, f both as a frost protectant and to protect these kind of crops, like all the brassicas and lettuce and all that stuff because they do get damaged by um, all the different types of bugs that attack them, especially the cabbage moth. Um, so, those hoops would be good it might to be like worth put a plastic. Yeah, it might be worth an experiment. Yeah, yeah. I think though, like, how can you control the bed temperature though? The like the what do you call it? The dirt. Um, you don't. They're cold hardy. I get it, but 
Not freezing it's party. Freeze. <laughs> like the soil freezes, like well, I don't know how many inches. Like, like, like I said, experiment. <laughs> yeah. experiment. You, you might want to try, a, you might put it a, one row in the center of the hoop. So, because when, it's, it, when the I sun see, hits it, it warms yeah. up the soil on either side. So it, yeah. it, if it's very center, it might be warm enough. I don't know. Yeah. We might try to plant like maybe a variety that we love so much, yeah. or a few different varieties, like like and, and, spinach and lettuce. And, and all these goofy, like all these goofy experiments we'll record. Yeah. And let everyone else see how it works out. Yeah. Uh, Nagasaki Akari Kabu turnip. Gee, I wonder if that's Japanese. <laughs> they like purple things over there, apparently. Uh, they're like me. Yeah. But I wonder if I have like a Japanese ancestor or something. Possible. <laughs> you are out there, no. <laughs> I always tell people I am from Asia. Just no one thinks that far. Yeah. Far east. <laughs> um, originally, I'm from Lebanon. Lebanon is in minor Asia, so. Or Asia Minor for the rest or, of us. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh man, these lights are making me feel so hot. It's been being here. <laughs> we have so many bloopers. <laughs> Why not leave some of them in the middle of the video? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, green <clears throat> majorata cauliflower. I, it's green. I loved it. I wanted to try it. Yeah. I, I you know, me being a me being a total amateur at this gardening thing. I would not think that's ready to eat. Yeah, or you might think it's like radioactive. <laughs> and the song Radioactive pops in my mind. I love that song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to sing it because YouTube might strike yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, for bad singing. <laughs> this, this video is going to be me laughing. <laughs> laughing the whole time oh, this is so terrible or or nice i don't know i'm enjoying this but me too <laughs> brunswick cabbage okay let's see uh this is introduced in 1924 a large drum head cabbage very cold hardy hardy a fall winter type stores very well and is an excellent market variety i wanted to try it out because um, again, we don't have a cold cellar. We do have a basement, so I thought uh, maybe this might be good for that time when we're done freeze drying. We're done making our basement feel hot. <laughs> and well, I'm, I'm wondering about the garage. We have to watch out for. Uh, yeah, we have mice and like. I try killing them, but stuff. it's it's easy for them to get into the garage. Yeah, <coughs> it is. Like whenever the kids go out and they leave the garage door open. All well, sorts of different. Even if the garage is closed, they get in. Stuff. I'm wondering if you have buckets though, and you put you, you put regular Home Depot buckets or food grade buckets, and you you put those in it, that could act like a cold cellar. Yeah, that's true. Or yeah, not Home Depot buckets because they're not food safe. Well, if this is wrapped up in something, it won't matter. True. Yeah. Uh, kale dwarf Siberian. Yeah, I wanted to like try out. A lot of cold hardy stuff because so, I wanted to have two different seasons or three different seasons. I wanted to have a spring season, a summer season, and a fall season. And so that's why I have also like these uh, things of different maturity rate and different cold hardiness so that we could have that. And like again, if you want to try out that. Thing, the hoop thing, yeah. uh, the cold frame thing. We could do yeah. that with these. You can try you know, one hoop with a variety. Yeah. That way you're not using a lot of seeds. Yeah. Yeah. I'm re really curious about the miner's lettuce. I think I have a feeling we're going to like it. Like, it also looks pretty. It does. Yeah. I don't know if you got, I showed it to you guys. Oh. It's really cool. I think one, like catch, one catch is how much sun do they need? Because over here in the winter, we don't get a whole lot of sun. True, but it's, if it's cold hardy, that means it's most likely going to be Cold and sun to... exposure are not the same thing. I get it, but I mean... You would think they should be yeah, able to handle it. Yeah, I don't it. know. I don't know. We have like very short days in the winter. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 
Japanese Minoes Daikon Radish. An old Japanese favorite, giant white roots grow to 24 inches long, sweet and very crisp. Again, I love to make kimchi and fermented um, stuff. I love all like the I, I, I don't know how you Koreans can pull it out of the ground. With a shovel or a fork. Like potatoes. No, this is different. This thing, look how big that thing is. Look how big this thing is, okay? You're gonna need some serious, like, pulling. You, if you have a, so you, need, you need very loose soil. Well, I think a, a huge part of it grows over the surface of the ground, like up to here. I don't think so. I think so, look at it. I, look at the you're the expert, I don't know. A lot of, like... I mean, look how many band-aids this poor person has trying to pull it out, look at that. <laughs> okay, this person has a lot of band-aids trying to get that out of the ground. I think I got, with the cauliflower, I got two different, um, not cauliflower, sorry, uh, broccoli, I got two different varieties, one for spring and one for fall. This is, light, yeah. yeah, there we go. Waltham 29 broccoli, introduced in 1954, our standard type producing four to eight inches of green heads, then abundant side shoots, cold tolerant too. Okay, so it makes like, a small head and then side shoots. That's cool. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I hope I succeed this time. Uh, radish French breakfast. I see a lot of people planting these and I really wanted to try them out. Radishes are really good. Yeah. They, they mature in a month. Yeah. So if you plant one row and then a wait a week and you plant another row and wait yeah. a week and you keep doing it four times, you can have this rotating area inside your bed and you, every week you have fresh radishes. Yeah, I love radishes too. They're great in salads yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, um, people use, also use them like potatoes um, for like roasting and stuff like that. I wasn't a big fan of that, but you could try them out. You might like, like them. Roasting? Like, ro like roasting and like putting them in yeah, I soups. I like them raw. And, yeah, me too. I'm, I'm a raw cabbage fan. Um, these, radish. yeah, not cabbage, radish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. These are pre-1885 French heirloom, mild spicy flavor, with red on top, white underneath. It says they're classic. Yeah, pre-19. Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've always grown like that little radish. Um, they come up so, pretty good, yeah. actually. Oh, my heart. Poppies. Two things I love. Three things I love. Poppies. Peonies, um, four things I love, <laughs> purple, <laughs> and this just flower structure itself. Yeah. I, I'm not one of them apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I know you too. Oh, right? oh, okay, so maybe there's five things then. Yeah. Well, a lot more. What about more. our children? I don't know. <laughs> about flowers. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Flowers. Okay. All right, okay. flowers. Okay. okay. Um, my f my childhood flower is poppies. Okay, it just brings a lot of memories to me. I could go on right now on that memory, but then this video would never end. <laughs> Purple Prince Zinnia. Look at that color. It's beautiful. So zinnias are. Um <laughs> she wants her dad, dad to bounce the ball. Zinnias are um, a flower that will attract ladybugs to your garden. So if you have a problem with aphids, um, plant some zinnias. They also look beautiful and they're a perfect cut flower. They have a long vase life and uh, they're very beautiful. You want to watch? You can watch us over here. Yes. I love you. Hi. Armenian yard long cucumber. Um, if you, I don't know if you've ever tried those uh, pickled uh, wild cucumbers in the stores. We have them over here, and those are the pickles I grew up on. Also, they're my favorite and the kids' favorites. Do you like them? Sure. Yeah, they're also really nice to have too. When they're pickled, they're very good. Oh, I'm gonna butcher this name. Oanaga Dubai. No, no one hurt you, anyways. Yeah, Oanaga. <laughs> it's a remedy. 
Yeah, a little cutie. Owanaga Jibai Cucumber. What else? Lots of seeds. King of the North Pepper. There's a reason why this is called King of the North Pepper. Supposedly, it's supposed to do good here <laughs> in the North. I hope so. Uh, blocky fruit are well flavored when picked green or red. Early and su superb for the North. Yields crisp green bells, ripen, ripening, hello, what's wrong with me? Ripening to red, right up until frost. Okay, so when frost hits, it's done. <laughs> That's what that means, right up until frost. <laughs> Dandelion, oh, it, Italico Rosso, Italico Rosso Dandelion. That looks very similar to the other one. It does, but it's different. The other one is purple, this one is red. This is the dandelion I grew up on. I see. That's the kind we have in, in Lebanon. Well, those, are, those are pretty bitter. No. no. The ones over here are more bitter than these. I see. Yeah. The ones that grow wild are more bitter than this. It says, a gourmet Italian chicory, beautiful red stems, deep green leaves, baby leaves are tangy in salads or cook for greens. Yeah, so uh, we've always picked them when they're like really mature and we uh, would cook them. You would blanch them to remove the bitterness. the bitterness and then like you know, my parents would fry them with some other stuff. They're very like, good. Yeah, they are really good. Yeah. There's a lot of seeds. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, beans. Oh, Blue Lake Bush. 274 beans. Well, it's not 274 beans. <laughs> That's the name. <laughs> you want to see it? Yeah, I love bush beans. They're great. They produce a lot too. Yeah. Uh, Cher harvest. Yeah, Cherokee purple. And you don't you don't need like any um, trellis or anything like any yeah, support really to easy. yeah Cherokee purple tomato. I wanted to try this one just because it was purple, and I think um, <laughs> as opposed to all the other purple stuff. <laughs> Not purple. Yeah, but that was free. You didn't buy Not that purple. one. purple. You didn't buy that one. <laughs> a pre-1890 Cherokee Indian heirloom. Beautiful, deep, dusky purple pink color. Superb, sweet flavor. Very large fruit. A customer favorite. Um, I think it might have said also on the website that it's good for... Uh, like uh, for canning, but I'm not sure. I gotta look it up too, because I do. Whether I can or freeze dry. Hey. Whether I can or freeze dry. <laughs> you can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so whether I eventually end up canning these tomatoes or freeze drying them, I wanted some varieties that would not have a lot of liquids in them. Um, yeah, Boopy, I love you. Uh, so that when you would like when I would process them to can them or to freeze dry them I'm not like s draining a whole lot of liquid and losing a lot of tomato flavor too um, So the freeze drying process leaves a flavor behind so it becomes very very potent It does, but I noticed that if you leave the sauce the tomato uh, liquid in it it becomes even more potent but if you leave the water the, if you leave the liquid in there if you leave the liquid in there, it would take a lot longer to freeze dry. Oh yeah, it takes a long time to freeze dry. Yeah, and also like if you're if you're canning, you're not like if you want to wait, make puree. You're talking about draining it before you start the freeze dry process. I I was thinking you you throw it with all the liquid, everything right in the in the plate, and you go and freeze dry it. I'll leave everything behind. Yeah, yeah, it would preserve all the flavor and stuff that way. Henderson's Bush Lima Beans. Oh, she wants to show you guys too. <laughs> um, this is supposed to also like uh, mature very quickly. I tried growing the lima beans from Heaven's Harvest and they never mature here. No matter how early I plant them, it didn't matter. Like, never, never matured. I've tried every single year we've been here. And not once they have matured for us. Um... <coughs> 
yellow sweet Spanish onions. These are also a long day variety and they mature, they grow really big. Let's see what else. Uh, mini bell pepper mix. Mm. They're beautiful. Yes, right? they are. I thought these, these would be fun for pickling and for salads. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for salads. You make some yeah. exotic salads with this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Napon <laughs> yellow <laughs> rutabagas. I've never tried rutabagas. No, I, that's not true. I, mean, I, I did try it once. You mean rutabagas? Rutabagas, rutabagas. I don't know how. To, yeah. Rutabagas, the, yes. It's rutabaga in a bag. Uh, <laughs> I've tried not planting them, but I've tr I have eaten them before. They're sweet. Um, so I, I just wanted to try planting them. And if we don't like them, then we won't plant them again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, again, like I only bought things that I know we're probably going to like because that's, those are all things that we eat anyways. Um, God forbid we buy more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want more. Oh my goodness. I was, I was restraining myself. Man, you should work harder at restraining yourself. You want milk? Okay, hold on. Yeah. Please wait. Actually, let's pause it and then we'll continue okay. afterwards. Uh, heavy. Yes, you are heavy. <laughs> mm, you're heavy, yeah. <laughs> okay, we took a little break. We're back now. Maybe you um, might want to take a little break and then come back. <laughs> it's a long video. <laughs> it's a long video. It's longer it's lo than I expected. It's a lot of seats. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> Pimento de Padron pepper. Hmm. Pimento de pa padron. Okay, so I think these are slightly hot. They look like it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're my second hand. Hold on, I want to read the instruction. Not instruction, I mean the information. Small fruited peppers originated in Galicia, northwest Spain. Often sauteed in olive oil and served as tapas. Fine for pickling. Oh yeah, that's why I got them, because they're for pickling. Yeah. Um, Ozark giant pepper. An old favorite colossal long bell peppers have delicious thick flesh. They start out green ripening bright red. I think these, um, yes. I might not plant all the varieties of peppers this year, but um, I got the seeds because I wanted to try them out. And the seeds can last for several years. Um, and I just wanted to get them while I'm at it. <laughs> kohlrabi. I've never tried kohlrabi also. Early purple Vienna. Again. If it's purple, you have to try it. <laughs> so in kohlrabi, you can also use the leaves and the, um, the bulb itself. I don't know what you call it. It's called bulb. Sure. Head. Thing. <laughs> okay. So a cold hardy pre-1860 variety, delicious cabbage flavored bulbs that grow above ground, purple skin and sweet white flesh. Doing black peony poppy. Oh, I guess I got two black peony poppies. Oh no, the other one was purple, right? The other one was purple because they look different. This is like less rough. No, that's zinnia. Don't ask a man about flowers unless it's B. Allen Smith. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who this Alan guy, but I'm gonna take him out. <laughs> He's a really nice guy. I don't mean for dinner. <laughs> uh, I guess this man. I mean, there are a lot of guys that are. Great I mean, there's a lot of these little designers. black dots coming out. It seems to me like one of the seed packets is open and is leaking seeds. I, I thought it was from like food or something. But. Yeah, that's concerning. I gotta figure out what's dropping those seeds. That's not good. I'm losing a lot of seeds right there. Mm. Mm, what has small seeds like that? Poppies? I think so. 
Oh, there it is. It's a purple peony. Yes. Here's that's the this is this one is the black peony and that's the purple peony. Yeah. Pretty cool. I think. I love love poppies. They don't have the greatest uh, leaf structure, but the flowers are just beautiful. Amish paste tomato. I thought it was because it's Amish and it says Amish on it. it must be good. Must be good. Must be good. <laughs> May Queen Lettuce. Uh, an early 19th century European heirloom, early maturing butterhead. Pale green heads are tinged with red and the sweet pale yellow. Hearts have a pink blush to them. Plant early in spring or fall. Harvest earlier for baby greens. So, I didn't show it. I want to show it. Looks beautiful. Oh... I love these peppers. I think I might have, actually after I bought them, I thought, oh, I think I do have a pack of these peppers that I ordered from Johnny Seeds last year and I totally forgot, <laughs> then I bought bought them again. Uh, Gabanelle, it's, I think this is heirloom, the other one I'm not sure it's heirloom, this one is heirloom. Gabanelli pepper, they're just Italian peppers. I think they're great for like just fresh eating because they're not so thick and their flavor is um, just like mild and refreshing. Did you want to read anything? Yeah. The popular pep pepper of Cuban, Puerto Rican, and Dominican cuisine. It doesn't say Italian on it, but in the store they sell it as Italian peppers. Serenity, what are you doing? Marketing. Yeah. She said mess. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. She's making a mess. Six to eight inches uh, long pepper is prized for sweet, mild flesh, rich flavor, and pretty colors. Used for quick cooking. And bait alpha cucumber. Um, hold on. This variety is very popular in the Mediterranean. That's right. Having been developed, this is what we use for pickling actually. Having been developed in Israel at a kibbutz farm, fine flavor, high yields, burpless, burpless? That's and have good great, news. <laughs> great shelf life. Superior for slicing and pickling. They're great for salads also because the seeds are so small. You have, harvest them when they're like little cucumbers. They're really good. They taste amazing too. I love them. Uh, tam jalapeno pepper oh hold on a very tasty mild jalapeno type the same delicious flavor but much less t less heat and productive um, peppers often appreciate a bit of afternoon shade during the hottest summer weather did not know that um we gotta find a good spot for those. Yeah. Because our stuff is always in the sun. Yeah. I thought, I mean, it's, I thought it's like a, you know, a plant that loves the heat, so it's gotta be in the sun. But I guess Maybe that, that depends was, on the weather. Yeah. And how much well, sun. Well, how much heat. I mean, yeah, for us, 90 heat. degrees and 100 degrees it, is rare. like really hot it's, also. It's, it's, and it's rare. Yeah. Like yeah. If you get 94, that's like, a, that's like. We did get a hundred last summer. Like, we did? Yeah. Over a hundred. Like, it was a few days. Okay, here, here. Just don't break it, okay? Um, Ash County Pimento Pepper. Pretty cool. Um, it says 52 days. Super early. Super sweet, red pimento, squat and small, about three to four inches wide and just one to 1.5 inches long. Incredibly flavorful and juicy. Early maturing and a little bit more cold tolerant than other peppers. Tidy bushes, just 24 to 30 inches tall, smothered in scrumptious fruits. So I want to try this out because peppers take for the, the varieties that we were growing took forever to grow and we never really had any peppers like we would have like two peppers yeah, the whole didn't. season it, it was just well. like yeah um uh, merlo nero spinach this is like a large leaf spinach um this is great i think for cooking dark green 
say savi I don't know how to pronounce that word savi leaves productive fairly early rare in USA USFA uh, sunflower chocolate cherry so I I, you guys see I have it? never heard of that. Yeah. So I have a plan for a, um, I'm making a butterfly garden um, on in one of our gardens. <laughs> and uh, it is like right on a hill. Um, and I want to plant a, a row of sunflowers. She's going to fall from my arms. <laughs> you put bread down here. <laughs> I want to plant a row of sunflowers right at the top of the hill and I thought that would look very beautiful. I'm thinking though I might want to intermix them with some other ones that would look beautiful with the black and the yellow. I was thinking how about taking the rest out of that box and then I put these in the box. Oh that's a good idea. Yeah. It's a lot less. Roma 2 beans. These are also beans that I grew up on. Um, it's it was it's hard to find these beans or maybe it was hard for me <laughs> i don't know hey what are you doing with my phone baby uh so improved romano bush green beans that produce loads of flavor flavorful wide six uh in six to seven inch pods so these are great for like mediterranean cooking um for those kind of recipes uh, they're not great for like salads, but um, they're good if in cooked food. <laughs> Ooh, this is for stuffing. Yes, eggplant, diamond, diamond eggplant, and for pickling. A Ukrainian variety collected by Seed Savers, exchanged in 1993, mild dark purple, six to nine inches, two to three slender fruit, superb flavor, and firm flesh. Er fairly early. So Ukrainian variety must be early. Uh, early scarlet globe radish. So this matures in like, I think it said, um, between like uh, 18 to 28 or something days or even less than wow. that, I'm not sure. Like it matures very quickly. Wow. So I thought these would be great for like just quick radishes. Yeah, I don't remember exactly how quick, but I do remember it was pretty, pretty early. That's special. Yeah. Spoon tomatoes. I thought these would be great for salads. They're like really tiny tomatoes. 60 to 70 days also. Not that long. It's two months. Yeah, but not like super long. Like the regular tomatoes would take forever to start producing. Forever's a long time. <laughs> Micro Tom Tomato. I thought this would be perfect to put on the deck along with like some basil and stuff like that and fun. Um, it's not like I need more tomatoes in my life, but <laughs> it's a tomato. <laughs> and whenever I want a snack and I don't feel like going out there on into the vegetable garden um, or, or a raised bed area, I, I could just grab a tomato off the deck and that would be my snack for the day. The whole day. <laughs> One tomato. You better have more than that because we're going to have tomatoes out of our ears. No, I'll, I'll keep tomatoes and cucumbers. Oh, these banana peppers. Pickles. Pickaboo. Pickaboo. Pickles. Banana pepper. Classic sweet. Let me bring it closer to you guys. Classic sweet Hungarian wax pepper that has been grown by generations of gardeners. Sleek tapered fruit to six to six to seven inches long. Translucent ivory ripening to stunning red orange. H. Roger. I think banana peppers are great. Black strawberry tomato. More tomatoes. <laughs> more snacks. More purple stuff. 60 days. 60 days. That's awesome. I think in 60 days we're going to have more tomatoes and know what to do with No, it's, I mean, I eat a lot of tomatoes. I hope so. Our girls eat a lot of tomatoes and also, we can give a lot of tomatoes and we can pickle and 
store a lot of tomatoes. Pickling and tomatoes. Yes, my aunt used to pickle tomatoes. Mm. I'll try that. Mm. Uh, dwarf Swiss mixed stock, perennial or annual. This sweet scented mix of blooms is a gorgeous landscape where cut flower stalks are an ornamental member of the brassica cabbage family. The scent is intoxicating and this mix is lovely. I wonder if you can eat this stuff. Not that I want to, but that's beautiful. A purple mix. Let's <laughs> see the purple garden. Purple. <laughs> Ooh, that's what I should call our the uh, purple garden. <laughs> our land, the purple garden. Uh, this was given to me also for free. Jazanti red tomato. It has no picture on it except for like fruit pictures, which makes no sense. That's, I don't know. That's uh, scary. It's from Baker's Creek. Oh, this one I got it. I got it just because it said um, that, like, it can you can leave this stuff like in the snow. Also, Russian red ragged jack kale. So, fifty days matures pretty quickly. A favorite all-purpose kale variety with eye-catching color and form. Russian red is very tender and mild at any size, but especially well suited to baby greens. The oak type leaves... <coughs> what are you doing? Loud. Yes, you are loud. You're so cute. <laughs> so funny. The oak type leaves of this pre-1885 early variety have a red tinge. Very pretty. I don't know. Did I show it? Show it again. Pretty cool. One last thing. More okra. This one, I got it just for the color because I thought it was, seems pretty rare to me. Burgundy okra. They look burgundy. 1983 AA. Pods are beautiful, deep red stems are also red, very tender and delicious, ornamental, tasty. O okra looks very beautiful. Okra flowers are also really good. The flowers are very beautiful. Yeah. And the leaves too. I think like if you plant them with the right stuff, you could, yeah. uh, it would look really cool. Yeah. Did you, so, show, you show this one? I, I did, yeah. Okay. I showed all of them. Hold on. We had three free ones that you didn't, you didn't pay for. Yeah. They also gave us... A um, three of them. Three free. Yeah. We, oh, I did order a lot of stuff too, yeah. so um, that's, that's quite, quite a lot of seeds over here. So if you guys want more garden related videos or um, food preservation videos, you could click on the videos over here that you'll see pop up over here. And uh, I think this is it. We thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you again in the next episode. <laughs> Bye! On video? Yeah, so this is how you make tea. <laughs> Take your cup here and put any teddy bears on it. This is, very, this is how I cook. This is my recipe for making tea. I take one of these packets here. And put it in. You have to annoy your wife while you do it. <laughs> and then you take your cup and then you put it, you get hot water in there. I'm done. That's my recipe. Make a little bit of sugar, but.